In this video, we're going to write a split function in C that's going to be very similar to the split functions in Python and JavaScript. So our split function is going to accept a string as an argument, and it's going to return an array of substrings after we've split the string based on separator characters. So for example, if we have a string like this, to be or not to be, that is the question. We could say that our separator characters are going to be space, comma, and period. And if we split the string based on these characters, we would expect an array of substrings made up of the words of this string. So to help us write our function, we're going to include a few libraries. We'll include the string.h library, which has functions that will help us work with strings. We'll also include the stdlib.h library, which will allow us to dynamically allocate memory using functions like malloc. And our function will look like this. We'll say car star star split car star string car star separators and int star count. So the function is going to accept the string as an argument, as well as the separator characters in a string as well. And the function is going to return a pointer to a pointer to a car which will allow us to return our array of substrings in dynamically allocated memory. This pointer to an integer count, that's actually gonna be used to effectively return the number of strings in that dynamically allocated memory. In other words, how many substrings are there? So to implement this function, we'll copy and paste this. And the way we're gonna solve this problem is that we're gonna make one pass of this string to first figure out how many substrings do we need to dynamically allocate space for. Then we'll make one more pass of the string. And on that pass, we'll be dynamically allocating enough space to store each substring. Then we'll be able to return the pointer to this 2D array on the heap. So the first thing we'll do is get the length of the string itself. We'll say int len is equal to str len string. So the strlen function comes from the string.h library and it will return the length of a string, not including the null terminator. We're going to have to keep track of the number of substrings that we're going to have to create. We'll use count to do that. So here we'll say star count is equal to zero. And here we're dereferencing the pointer to actually set the value being pointed to by this pointer to zero. And we'll have to do this as we work with count throughout the function. So to step through the string, we'll have a loop with two inner loops. We'll say int i is equal to zero, and i is gonna be used to step through the string. And in the outer loop, we'll say while i is less than len. Our first inner loop is gonna step through any separator characters before the first actual substring that we wanna store. So we'll say here while i is less than len, if str car separators string i is equal to null then break otherwise we'll increment i so what's going on here is that we're going to step through any separators that occur first using this str car function so str car is defined in the string.h library and the way it works is that it returns a pointer to the first occurrence of this character in this string. If it can't find an occurrence of this character in this string, it returns null. So what we're doing with this loop is we're continuing to increment i and step through the string one character at a time, so long as this character is found in this string. In other words, so long as this character is a separator character. Once this character cannot be found in the string, we've found a non-separator character, and we have the beginnings of the first substring that we want to create. Next, we'll step through the substring. So here we'll say int old i is equal to i, while i is less than length, if str car separators string i does not equal null, then we're going to break. 
Otherwise, we're going to increment i. So we've got a very similar process going on here. We're stepping through the string again using the counter variable i. And we're using str car to detect this time when we've reached the next separator character. So here we're checking, is this character in the separator string? If it is, it's going to return a non-null value because it's found it somewhere in the separator string. So if we do find the character in the string, that means we've reached the next separator character and this substring is done. So when str car doesn't equal null is when we're going to break because that's when we know we've reached the end of this substring portion. We also have this old i is equal to i. And that's the guard for the case that we don't actually find any actual substring here. We've perhaps reached the end of the string, and at this point, we're just done. The reason why we have to have old i as a check is we only actually want to increment the count of substrings that we're going to have to create if we've actually identified a new substring. So here we'll say if i is greater than old i, then increment count by one. So only if we actually did step through some non-separator characters, in other words, only if we actually have a substring that we need to create, do we increment count. Because it's possible that, for example, we're just at the end of the string. So this process here should give us the count in terms of the number of substrings that we need to be able to create. Because if you look at the process we're following here, we're stepping through a separator and then stepping through a substring. And we just keep following this process until we reach the end of the string. So for example, if we did have the string here, let's imagine we're analyzing this. First, we would step through any leading separator characters at the start of the string. So perhaps there's spaces. Then eventually, we're going to find a character that is not in the separator string. In this case, it would be capital T here. Then this loop would stop. And this loop here would then keep looking for characters until it finds a character that is in the separator string. So it step through T and O here. Then we hit space. And then we'd be done. We would increment the count. And then we would step through the next sequence of separator characters. And this process would just keep on going. And we would keep a count of all the substrings that we're going to have to create. Now what we'll have to do is dynamically allocate space for enough pointers to all the substrings that we're going to create. And we can think of this as an array of pointers to strings. And we use malloc to do it. So here I'll say car star star strings is equal to malloc size of car star times star count. So what we're doing here is allocating a space for this amount of pointers to strings. And we have this car star star strings here because we have a pointer to a pointer to a car because strings is effectively going to be a 1D array of pointers to strings that's dynamically allocated on the heap. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make another pass of that string using basically identical logic to what we have here. But this time, we're going to actually store the substrings into each string that we're going to dynamically allocate space for on the heap. So we'll actually copy and paste this here as a starting point. We'll get rid of this int here because we already declared i above. We will set i to zero though, because we are starting again here. Now this logic here, where we step through the separators, is going to be identical as to how it was before. What's going to be different is this time, when we look at each substring, we're going to want to actually store the substring. So what we'll do is create a temporary buffer to store each substring that we read in. It will make it a very large buffer. So up here, we'll say car buffer 16 
384. So that is a very large character array that we're going to be able to store our substrings into temporarily before we allocate space for them on the heap and copy them there. We're also going to have to keep track of which index are we at in this array of pointers to strings that we're going to be using to store each string. So we'll say here int string index equal to zero, just to keep track of which index are we in, in that array of pointers to strings. So now down here, when we loop through this substring here, we're going to have to keep track of which character of the substring are we at. And we're going to set buffer at that index equal to the string at index i. So we're going to copy each character of the substring into buffer from index j starting at zero onwards. And we'll increment j each time through this loop here. When we're done, we'll append on a null terminator character onto the end of buffer, just to null terminate the string. So we'll set buffer at index j equal to the special null terminator character that terminates the string. Now what we've done is copy the substring into buffer. What we'll do is dynamically allocate space now on the heap to store that string. So here we'll say int to allocate is equal to size of a car times the string length of buffer plus one. So to store the string in buffer on the heap, we're going to need space for the amount of characters in the buffer string plus the special null terminator character that string length doesn't account for multiplied by the amount of space required to store a character. And that's going to be the amount of space we're going to have to allocate. So here we'll say strings at string index is equal to malloc to allocate. So malloc will go out and allocate enough space and it'll return a pointer to a block of memory. And we're going to have strings at string index store that memory address. Then we'll copy the string in buffer into that space that we've allocated on the heap. And we'll use the string copy function inside the string.h library to do that. We'll say str cpy strings at string index copy in the buffer. So as with before, it's possible that in this loop here, we haven't actually read in any non-separator characters because it's possible that the string actually ends with a group of separator characters instead of a group of non-separator characters. If that's the case, J is actually going to be zero. And all this logic here doesn't actually make sense to run. So we'll actually wrap this in an if statement. We'll say if J is greater than zero, then we're going to do this work here because we know we actually have a string in the buffer. So I'll actually put this code here in the body of this if statement. We'll also increment string index. We'll say string index plus plus. Because at this point, we know that we want to increment the string index. So that way, next time through this loop, we can actually write to the next index of this strings array here. And then we can delete this here. So finally, what we'll do is return strings. We're going to return the array of dynamically allocated substrings that we've created. And if you look at the logic in the second big while loop here that makes the second pass through the string, it's very, very similar to the above logic. The big difference is this time here, when we look at the non-separator characters, we're actually copying that substring into the buffer one character at a time. And then we take what's in that buffer, we dynamically allocate space to store it into this array of dynamically allocated strings, and we copy that string into that array at the next position. So now we can test our function out. Up here, we'll make an integer variable to store the number of substrings created by the split function. So we'll say int count strings is equal to zero. Then we'll call the function. We'll say car star star split strings is equal to split. 
s our separator string is going to be made of space comma and period and then we'll say and count strings so we're giving the split function our string s our separator string are those separator characters the comma space character and period they're going to separate the things we're interested in in this case the words we're passing the memory address of count strings because the function is effectively using this count pointer parameter to return another value in this case the number of substrings that are created and here we have car star star split strings and that's going to store a pointer to the array of pointers to strings on the heap after this we can loop through that array and print out each string we'll say for int i is equal to zero i is less than count strings i plus plus and we'll say printf percent s to print out a string followed by backslash n for a new line i will output split strings at index i so we're using i as a counter variable to go through all the elements of the split strings array and we're outputting each string in that array then when we're done we're actually going to want to free all the space that we've dynamically allocated so we're actually going to loop through split strings again so we'll have four int i is equal to zero i is less than count strings and then i plus plus and this time we'll say free split strings at index i and what we're doing here is freeing the space that was allocated for each individual string. And then finally, we'll say free split strings to free the space that was dynamically allocated for the array of pointers to strings. So we should be able to test this out now. So we'll save this and run it. We get build succeeded. And we can see here that we've successfully extracted all of the words of that string in an array of substrings. So this is how we can create a split function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.